Welcome to the first installment of the What Evs minicast. Your host, B. Quanchi, here. For the background, I kind of had this idea to do something on the channel that's a little bit more shorter, maybe more focused on a single subject. I do have my main uh, stuff or whatever podcast. Um, if you haven't checked it out, you know, feel free to check it out on the channel. But this kind of had ideas so that way I can do something kind of spur of a moment, something a little bit more topical. And wanted to do one talking about the recent Nintendo Direct for E3 2021. So let's get into this. And before I start, I'm going to skim through some of these. So I'm not going to be extremely thorough. And it has some days to digest and all that. So it's not like a quick like live reaction the day of the Direct. So it's been a day or so. And I think that kind of helps too. But I wanted to go over, and this might be a little based on my taste and opinion too. So, and then I'll post the direct, um, the link to the Nintendo Direct for convenience as well. But let's jump into it. And I want to say my initial reaction to the Nintendo Direct was a little disappointed, especially for like E3, something big. I think as I took time to kind of like watch other videos, um, kind of dissecting, giving opinions and things like that, I, I feel like it was good. And as I talk about Direct, I want to end this video too, talking about what was missing, what felt like was missing, and also some ideas I have what I like to see from Nintendo. So kind of like the layout for this podcast. But I wanted to get started with the Smash reveal. So they reviewed the new character, Kazuo from Tekken. And this was the thing I was a little disappointed of. Um, I think it's a great addition, don't get me wrong. I haven't been too much into Tekken since like the first three games, so I think it's a, a nice surprise. But I kind of felt like they should have something bigger for like an E3. Like I felt they should have put Kazuo a little bit later for a new character announcement. And I think my common theme, theme through the Nintendo Direct is that was pretty neat. So uh, you're probably going to get out a lot in this podcast, but yeah, I thought adding Kazuo is pretty neat. I kind of wish they had um, other choices. Um, I know if you would like to predict or guess and things like that, but I really thought Crash Bandicoot would have made a really great, especially for, for like an E3 announcement, a really great addition to Smash. Kind of felt like a good like kind of mascotty platformer character, this kind of a resurgent with Crash, with the trilogy being remade and the fourth game finally coming out. So I feel like he has a lot more relevance and I thought that would have been a really great one to put out. And two ones I also wanted to mention, I know the internet talks about them constantly, but it would have been like a crazy moment if it were to announce Geno from Super Mario RPG because people always ask and always demand and always want Geno. If they would have done it for E3, that would have been like legit batshit crazy. I know some people like have these theories or talking like, Oh, this deconfirms that. This, you know, rules out that. So even though they added Gino for the Me Fighters, the costumes, I don't think that really uh, rules him out. So I think he's always a possibility. But I kind of wish Nintendo would just give that to us. But I think just for E3, it should have been bigger. And then the one I know he's been mentioned a lot too, but Waluigi. I mean, how crazy would that have been if Waluigi would have been announced at E3 that he was going to be added to Smash? And I get it. He's in the game already as an assist trophy. But it would have been like so dope if Nintendo like, hey, we're adding Waluigi. In the update, we're going to remove his assist trophy to make sure he's added to the roster because that would have been a little weird to have both assist trophy and a playable character at the same time. And that did, I think that would just open the floodgates that uh, if they'd been assist trophy uh, character in the same game and made those changes, that means like anything's on the table. Because I think some people forget or whatever, but Little Meg was assist trophy in Super Smash Bros. Brawl and then eventually became a playable character. So just because they were assist trophy in the past doesn't mean they aren't an option. But I thought that would have been totally crazy if uh waluigi or gina would have been announced and crashed again who knows um in the future but my last kind of comments too i read a comment like this on twitter um that it kind of feel like the big novelty of smash is to have characters that are from non-fighting games like platformers or whatever and i feel like they, they keep adding like fighters um i know there's always complaints about oh another sword fighter another anime character 
And that was almost like the brawler kind of characters because they added but Terry from King of Fighters. And, he, of course, you had you Street Fighter, um, Street Fighter of you and Ken. So I feel like they're, they're due for something new and different. Moving on, um, in the direct, you talked about Life is Strange. I never really got into this game. I'm not too enthusiastic about it. Um, but they did remaster their first games. And I guess the new game, True Colors, is the one coming out. And yeah, I guess fans of the series or who want to jump to the series and are, are Switch owners, you know, that's neat. But don't really care too much about Life is Strange. And it was like a little quick scene after that. The Guardians of the Galaxy game is coming to Switch. That's kind of cool. I, I'm not sure if we're going to check that out. They mentioned Worms Rumble. I've been playing the older Worms games on PC, like Worms Armageddon. And this one looks a little bit more action or more more faster pace. I may check it out, but it to me pretty neat. And then there's like a new RPG, Ashura Ascending, I believe. And I don't know. I, I I'm an RPG player. I, I I love those games a lot, but I'm not sure about that one. It just sometimes they come out with so many, you know. If especially if it's like a time suck, I'm so I don't know. But that's kind of an at least it looks kind of cool. And then there's one two. Point campus. It's kind of like, like a simulation or whatever, like managed stuff, but I don't care too much about that. Not that was Super Monkey Ball. They're going to remaster, I believe, like th three of the games, like the first three, and called Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. I never really played them. I've been kind of meaning to, and I think this collection it might be more something that I'm leaning more towards actually getting. So that, I thought that was cool. Next is Mario Party Superstars. So I thought this was really cool. I know there was kind of some speculation because they uh, recently announced online play for Super Mario Party. And it looks like this one's based off the best of the N64 games. That includes five boards and 100 mini games. And I know a while back, a few years back, they had the 100 top 100 for the 3DS or whatever. And I heard that got some criticism because there was some... Not so great games, but I was looking at the eShop. It seems like the remaster or whatever you want to call the Mario Party Superstar is going to include stuff like you mentioned, like GameCube and more. So I, I feel like at least when it comes to the mini games, it's not just going to be from the N64 games that it's going to include a more wider selection. But for me, it feels, I don't know, for having five boards, that kind of feels a little small. Kind of had the opinion with Super Mario Party is that I kind of felt like they had, had could have had more boards, but I feel like the old games were a lot more eventful fun. I felt like Mario Party it was more about the mini games than board game, but it seems really interesting. I'm I'm definitely interested in Super Mario uh, the Mario Party Superstar. So next, I would say like the biggest highlight of the Nintendo Direct is the new Metroid game they announced, uh, Metroid Dread, which is going to have the 2D style of gameplay. It's coming this year, so that's great. And yeah, a lot of people, I'm sure you can find a lot of videos talking about it. There's a lot on Nintendo's official YouTube. Um, so it's really great for fans of the series and hope it does really well because I feel like Metroid hasn't been all that mainstream as it could be. A little disappointed that the, the, there's no news on Metroid Prime 4. I think that's understandable, you know, with 2020 being 2020. And that it doesn't feel like it was that long ago that they completely scrapped the game and started over with a new studio, so kind of keep that in mind. And after that, they talked about some other games. There's the new Just Dance game. I don't care about that. There's Cruisin' Blast, a new racer that looks kind of neat. I think that's the long going. I just remember the Cruisin' USA back on N64, so that looks kind of neat, but I'm not sure if that's something I will check out. Then there's a Dragon Ball Z Kakarot game that came out a while ago. It's coming to Switch. And it's something like the new Power Awakens set. So I think it's going to come with additional content. I'm not sure if I'm going to get that. I'm, I really love Dragon Ball Z. But I feel like that game, from what I've seen, seems a little bit more bloated. And some like management and things like that. So I don't know. I, I'm not looking to jump into the Kakarot game. And of course, they talked about Mario Golf. It's coming out very, very soon. Um, it seems like a more unique sports game for Mario. I know they always like to spice things up. 
And it's nice to know that there's some free updates. So that's coming up soon. And after that was uh, news about Monster Hunter Stories 2. It seems cool. I never really got really much into the series, but there is a demo for that, so that might be worth checking out. And after that, they announced a new WarriorWare game for Switch. It seems pretty neat. I'm not sure if it's something I'm going to dive into, but I showed some of the gameplay. It feels like it's kind of more platformy for the micro games. And I did remember seeing before E3 that there was like a little survey or someone posted or shared or uh, leaked or whatever about a survey about like the cost of a new WarriorWare game. So I kind of felt that was hinted out before the Direct, so it wasn't too, too surprising. And after that, it showed um, Shim Megami Tensei 5, which looks cool. I haven't been too familiar with the series. I do like RPGs. I'm not sure if that's something I'm going to dive into. I think if for a new RPG, I may lean towards that. But uh, yeah, it seems pretty interesting. I know it's been the long running. I'm sure it has a, a pretty long, dedicated fan base. So kind of ex get happy for those excited about that game. Then after that, uh, Dunkarampa is coming to Switch. And I thought that was pretty cool. I have all the main three games on Steam. I'm still finished up, um, as of this recording, still finished up the third game, V3. And I thought that was pretty cool. Like for fans, um, someone who may be new to the series, they can get the collection. It's Dunkarampa Decadence. And there's going to be a new game, kind of, uh, called Dunkarampa S Ultimate Summer Camp. It's based off like the mini game or whatever in V3. I haven't really checked out, but a lot of the Dunkarama games have kind of like after game or post game contact. It's kind of like fun. And it seems like this is a more expanded version of it. It has like a board game style, a lot of RPG like gameplay, it looks like. If you see like the uh, direct, um, you can see a little bit more of it. The good thing about this is that each game is for an individual sale in the eShop. That's the plan, it looks like. So if you own all three games and don't want to rebuy them, you can just buy the Ultimate Summer Camp for your Switch. They may ex um, have that on other platforms too. Nothing that I've seen yet. But I'm kind of looking forward to it. It seems like a fun one to have my Switch too, so I'm glad you can play that expanded side game and not rebuy all the games. And I'm not sure, but I'm not sure if the collection is for the physical release only or if they're going to do like a digital Dunk from a Decadence. I'm not quite sure. But at least it's good to know that you don't have to buy everything if you want one or two titles. So I thought that was pretty cool. Next, Fatal Frame, uh, Made in Black. Uh, I did some quick research, and this is uh, a port, I believe. And I'm not too big in the series. It's um, not quite for me. I did play a little bit of one of the games a long time ago. Uh, but I'm glad that the fans of the series have something on the Switch. I think that's pretty cool. I think Nintendo owns Fatal Frame. I thought I remember reading something like, if there's any new thing for Fatal Frames, it's up to Nintendo. So we'll see what happens. But yep, new Fatal Frame Elise ports uh, coming to Switch. Doom Eternal, I think that's neat. I haven't played it. I might check it out. The remake of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, the remaster, is coming to Switch, and I think that's really neat. Uh, me check that out. There's something called Strange Brigade. I don't really care about it too much, so I'm just going to glance over that. And of course, they talked about Mario and Rabbids, um, Spark of Hope, new game. They didn't mention that in the Ubisoft Direct, so Nintendo kind of skimmed over that so it wasn't like too too time consuming but really like the first game and the sequel feels like it's a step up that um adding more to it so it's not just like a direct copy so it'd be really great to see that one so looking forward to that one i believe coming out next year then after that the advance wars uh, remake based on the first two games and it looks really neat i haven't really played those games i can get into that kind of style, it's like a strategy RPG. Um, it looks really nice. I had some criticism about how some of the remakes are kind of like toyish, but I think it look, I like the presentation, like how the characters are drawn and animated. So I believe that was just on Game Boy Advance. I'm not sure, maybe DS2. I'm pretty sure on DS because it makes sense if the map was all part of Dual Screen. So, but I know they, it's a 
the much older games, so nice to see life into them. So that one I might actually check out. Now that they talked about the Hyrule Warriors um, DLC that's coming out, I haven't checked out the game. I like the idea of it. I think I might eventually get it, but it's just been on the back of my uh, mind or on the back burner. But they announced at least the first wave. Um, I guess you can play as a guardian. They have the master bike or the bi bike item and a new weapon for I think just Link, but it's like a like a nunchuck guardian thingy weapon. Um, I think that's neat, but nothing I'm too excited about. Then, of course, they talked about the Skyward Sword HE port that's coming out very soon. I think it's, meh, I'm not too excited about the that port, but some are. And then they talked for the anniversary. There was uh, a Game and Watch for Zelda. They did one last year for Mario. I think it's neat. I'm not sure it's quite for me, but the, the cool thing about the Game Watch includes the playable versions of Zelda 1, 2, and Link's Awakening. So there's three games in there. And like a little Game Watch game based with Zelda as the character. And the clock. It has the clock too, so that's kind of neat. And then the last uh, was more information about Breath of the Wild 2. So they showed a little video wasn't too much that we got, but there seems to be new stuff, new mechanics. You can probably see like videos online about kind of breakdowns dissecting it. So to me, it kind of feels like it's um, going to be faithful to the first game in terms of the gameplay, but they're adding to it. So it's not like just the next game is going to be more mechanics, more uniqueness. So I think that helps a lot too with the sequel, but it's a little old, a little new, but it looks really good. And for that one, they say it's coming next year. They just said 2022. Sometimes they may give like a month or a season. I have a really good feeling it's just going to be the end of year next year in 2022, like late fall, early winter. That gives an excuse for next year for E3. They can show a lot more and do like the treehouse presentation and stuff like that. So that's my prediction that Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out end of next year but they're going to have a lot more for the e3 for 2022 and that does it for the, the nintendo direct so some things i want to go over which felt like missing there was kind of rumors and talks um about possibly a new mario kart i think there was like a small little update that didn't really mean much but and it's funny that mario kart 8 technically is a port on a switch so it's still been a while for a new game if not downloadable context so people hoping for new mario kart more news on donkey kong i read that there's a game in development from the team that did super mario odyssey but absolutely nothing like not even title or any more information and some people hoping for super mario odyssey 2 but no news about a new 3d mario no pikmin 4 <laughs> Yes, I'm trying to think. I'm not sure when they announced that. I'm not sure if it's still in development or if it's in development hell. Um, they released last year Pikmin 3 Deluxe. So I thought it would be something Nintendo might be still interested in doing. And we wish there was some news, but that's kind of MIA. And there was some talks uh, I read online about Fire Emblem. Possibly remakes of the older games that were on the Wii, like Path of Radiance, like the games with Ike, uh, but no news on Fire Emblem. And Bayonetta 3, no news. And some things that I also kind of noticed myself is they didn't talk about the great Ace Attorney Chronicles that's coming to Switch. They did drop the E3 trailer on the uh, Nintendo channel, but I'm surprised they didn't like, squeeze a little tidbit about that. And like they could have squeezed a little tidbit about the No More Heroes 3, although I, I did see there was some like treehouse gameplay or uh, presentation or whatever you want to call it, but I'm surprised that didn't squeeze a little segment into the direct. And also the game uh, Neo The World End with, Ends With You. I felt that they could have squeezed a little info on the direct itself. So last few things I want to talk about is some things I would like to see from Nintendo. I kind of wish they would acknowledge your fans more, what they demand, what they ask, especially when it's like social media or comments and even live chatting on their sh uh, streams, is that it feel like fans ask for stuff, but we don't get it. 
And I'm sure there's a lot of things that go behind the scenes. There's a, and of course, 2020 was a rough year for everyone. But it kind of feels like a lot of stuff repeated. Like, for example, like Gino, Waluigi for Smash. Um, uh, people talk about like the they really want ports of Super Mario RPG and Earthbound for the SNES on the Nintendo Switch online service and localized Mother 3. So I feel like a lot of those get chanted and repeated and ranted about, but no really acknowledgement. So I feel like, you know, that's kind of the best marketing or like the easy accessible marketing is like listening to your direct fans directly from social media, but who knows? And one thing I had an idea, but I don't think anyone really mentioned this and that I heard, but I think it'd be really, really cool if Nintendo launched on the Nintendo Switch online for a Game Boy Advance. That makes sense to me, and it'd be really cool to have a lot of great Game Boy Advance titles. And I know people have the complaints about the online service, especially with the multiplayer and online play. But if they, especially like even the NES and SNES uh, libraries, it feels like every time they announce, release like a few titles, it's been more sporadic, and it's been games that are very lackluster. I think a lot of people's opinion, but if they were to announce Game Boy Advance on Nintendo Switch Online, that would be, be a game changer, and I think that would make a lot of people happy. And one thing, uh, they didn't talk about Pokemon in the um, Direct, and that kind of makes sense because they had the big one about talking about uh, the Diamond Pearl remake and the Legends uh, Arceus. But I had an idea, like, they should expand the Pokedex for Sword and Shield. I think that would have been crazy if they would have announced that. Like saying, like, when the Diamond Pearl remakes come out, they're going to add the complete Shino decks to Sword and Shield to 8th Gen. That would have been crazy. Or even crazier if they've been like, hey, we're going to give you the full national decks. Here it goes. You can import any Pokemon in uh, Sword and Shield um, through trading or uh, Pokemon Home. But if it would have just, like, dropped that, like a mic drop, that would have been, like, fucking crazy. Like, oh, my God. So I'm not sure because I know, like, as they... Um, brought in the DLC as they integrated home. They did, of course, add a lot more Pokemon to the game. Some not part of the Pokedex, like the Lone Starters, the um, I forget the Gen Three uh, uh, region, but like the Mudkip and um, Trico. And, no, forgive me, I'm, I'm on the spot, but I feel like there was, and of course, like the legendaries and mys mystical Pokemon too. They don't have Pokedex entries, but are in the game. But I thought that would have been crazy if they would have, like expand more. Like, hey, now that I have more time, we can actually expand the Pokedex and make sure every Pokemon's in the game. But who knows? And the last thing I would like to see is mention of just games in development, even if there's not much to show. I feel like for these presentations, show like it's really a big deal to have like a trailer, gameplay, something. But if they would have just dropped a logo or just like, hey, Pikmin 4 is in active development, or if they would have said, hey, a new Star Fox is in development, or a new F Zero title is in early development, and it would have just like a quick snip, like saying, hey, we're working on this, hey, we're working on that. We don't have much to show on it, but we're working on it. And I think people would, just, even with a little tiny seed of info, would just go a long way. Because um, I get the idea of like having big surprises too. Like I feel like the Metroid Dread one was probably the biggest surprise, but I think it doesn't hurt to have like something, especially if the overall presentation isn't okay. Yeah, but I feel like again that's my impressions of the E3 for the Nintendo Direct is that it was pretty neat. It was okay. It really wasn't too much hype. Again, Metroid was probably the biggest hype. But it kind of makes it feel like, like, oh my god, that game's coming out, and that game, and they also work on this, and that. So I, f I feel like it's been quite some time before kind of having those feelings of being excited about multiple things from the same company, from the same direct. But who knows? But that's kind of like my two cents and a half for the Nintendo Direct. So hopefully you enjoyed this little video, this little mini cast. It's probably even longer for a mini cast. And I'm looking at it, but nonetheless, it's more focused on the direct. And, you know, if you're new to the channel or want to check things out, I'll be happy to see that. You know, comment below what you thought direct, you know, subscribe. Um, some feedback as well, because I might do a little bit more of these like mini casts for like more smaller things. 
but it's something I just play around for with, like kind of throwing stuff at the wall or just doing whatever. So, whatevs. So, thanks for listening, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.